Hallelujah. Relationship with the opposite sex. Who can highlight some of the things that we looked into last week, if you can remember? It's okay to look at the book, if you can remember. <laughs> we just need to go through it quickly, and then we look at today's lesson. Okay. We looked at the memory verse, which says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust." And we looked at some outlines, which is common mistakes in platonic relationship. And then we looked at tips for pure friendship. We looked at so many mistakes in platonic relationships. Say failure to set or actively not clear boundaries. Misinterpreting the intentions of the opposite sex. Tolerating too much inappropriate actions in the relationship. Turning a blind eye to every danger signal, such as emotional attraction, attempting to touch se sensitive parts of the body, and we looked at getting involved much too soon and going too far, such as involvement in family functions, financial and business commitment, and so on. And we looked at some tips, just going through them very quickly. Define the level of um, relationship and set clear boundaries. We looked at never assume anything but ask questions when in doubt. Do not allow anyone from a protective canopy over your life under the pretense of friendship. We looked at do not take advantage of your closeness to your friend to seize them into an inappropriate romantic activity. We looked at differentiate platonic relationship from friendship leading to intimacy, avoid only places that corners with a friend of the opposite sex. I'm in conclusion because of our time. Say so prioritize platonic same sex friendship. If you must have a friend of the opposite gender, know your boundaries. Know your boundaries and make sure you talk about them. If you took anything from last week from the summary know your boundaries yes you can have friends but they you need to create a boundaries you can't go beyond this hallelujah so today's teaching is king solomon king solomon so we'll be looking at the life of king solomon and we can see what we can learn from his life the good things he did and the not good things he did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Kings 4.29. 1 Kings 4.29. It's on the book. If you can all read it together, please. On to go. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the sea shore. Can we look at 30 as well? If you can open up Bibles. I'll read from here. And it says, And Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. <laughs> can you imagine? One person's wisdom exceeds, let's say for a whole city. This is amazing. Hallelujah. So our Bible passage is taken from 2 Chronicles 9, 22-28. 2 Chronicles 9, 22-28. Can someone read very quickly, please? 2 Chronicles 9, 22-28. I'll read from the KJV. Thank you. And all the king, king vessels of King Solomon were of gold... And of the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold, none were of silver. It was not anything haunted of in the days of Solomon. Mm. For the king's ship went to Tarshish, the servants of human. Every three years, once came the ship of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes mm. and peacocks. And Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of King Solomon to hear his wisdom that God has put in his heart. 
And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold and ramen, harness and spices, horses and mules, right year by year. And Solomon had 4,000 stores for horses and chariots and 12,000 horsemen whom he bestowed in the church cities and were king at Jerusalem. And he reigned over all kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistines mm. and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem mm. as stones and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. Mm -hmm. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt and out of all lands. Now, up to 28. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. As you can see from the reading that we've just um, looked into, what wisdom. The magnitude of the wisdom Solomon had attracted a lot of things. People want to see him. People want to get answer from him. People want to get opinion from him. That's the, that's the kind of person we emulate. Not the good part of his lifestyle. Not the, <laughs> we'll look at the other side. But the good part of his lifestyle is something we should emulate. God was with him through the journey of his life. God was his ally. God helped him so much. God gave him a wisdom that cannot be phantomed. But because of all the other things, the concubines and the wives and all those things, which turned his heart against God and followed other gods. Our prayer this morning is may men and women come to see us in the name of Jesus and give ear to our wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. One thing to note here is that when you have exceptional wisdom, men and women will look for your counsel and your opinion. When you have exceptional wisdom, people will want to be close to you. When you want an opinion or something that, that you want to do, you go to that person for counsel. Have you seen anybody going to a foolish person for counsel? Not possible. You don't go to a foolish person for counsel. You go to someone who has the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians, if you look at that very quickly, 1 Corinthians 1, 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians 1, 6 to 8. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 1, 6 to 8. I'll read from here very quickly. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of the age, who are coming to nothing, seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, eight, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ of glory. Hallelujah. So may the Lord help us to operate fully in this spiritual wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the introduction is from the book. Solomon was born in Jerusalem, 1000 BC to King David and Bathsheba. He was King David's 60th son. Solomon was a fabulously wealthy and wise king of a unified kingdom of Israel who succeeded his father, King David. He was one of the most powerful kings of the eastern lands. He is the author of 3,000 proverbs, and he composed 1,005 songs. If you don't have wisdom, you can't do that. <laughs> have you seen a foolish person writing any book? And they say to you, oh, this book was written by a foolish person. Would you, would you buy that book? <laughs> if, you look in, if you go to the book of Proverbs, and you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, and you go to the book of Songs of Solomon, you will see so much insight. You will see so much wisdom. You see so much guidelines. You see so much counsel. Those books are packed with wisdom. Hallelujah. So our outline this morning is we'll be looking at his character and achievements. 
and lessons from his life. You know, the lesson we can learn from him. You see where it says Solomon was a fabulously wealthy and wise king of a unified kingdom. That's so much combination. First, fabulously wealthy. Second, he was wise. And then thirdly, he had a unified kingdom. That's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. When God is with you, this is what you can achieve. Hallelujah. So character and achievement. King Solomon ruled Israel between 970 BC and 930 BC. He wrote the books of Songs of Solomon, also called Songs, Song of Songs, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. He asked the Lord for an understanding heart to judge his people, that he might discern between good and evil. That he may discern between good and and evil. Hallelujah. You see, Matthew 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see the kind of thing that um, Solomon seeked? He wasn't seeking for um, riches. He wasn't seeking for all those things that the Bible says, if you seek first the kingdom, all these things. He didn't seek for all those things. He seeked the kingdom. And God added unto him riches, wealth. Hallelujah. So God gave him a wise and understanding heart. <laughs> to rule people, you need a wise and understanding heart. You need a wise and understanding heart. You need to be able to counsel people. If you're not wise, you can't counsel anybody. He built the house of the Lord, the temple on Mount Moriah in 2 Chronicles 3.1. Because of our time, we just skip that. He surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and honor in his days. He surpassed. <laughs> Can you imagine saying one person in this Ashford or in this, let's say in this Ashford is the richest in the whole of, will he say Kent? One person has the whole kind, a, a different kind of wisdom in the whole of Kent. Do you think the person is going to rest? No. People will want to come to that person for wisdom. People will want to come to that person for counsel. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was packed with so much wisdom. People were running after him. And when he start teaching people, you will realize that... Indeed, this is the son of God. And the kind of wisdom he had, sometimes when he expresses it, people get confused. <laughs> he spoke a lot in Proverbs, you know, and parables. If you're not full of wisdom, you won't even get to that level of speaking in parables <laughs> or speaking in Proverbs. Hallelujah. So Solomon, his reign was the most peaceful as he did not fight any war. He did not fight any war. Hmm. A wisdom and an understanding heart. Hallelujah. Towards the end of his life, he had, that's when he derailed. Look at someone who God has been helping. God impacted into him a kind of wisdom that no other man had. A heart of understanding that nobody else had. God gave riches beyond measure. God gave him wealth beyond measure. Because of the wisdom that God gave unto him, people were running after him and giving him gifts and so many things. But he left that. Not that he left that, he was deceived by 700 wives <laughs> and 300 concubines. How can one man? <laughs> I don't know how you have to manage one wife, not to talk of 700 wives and 300 concubines. <laughs> God 
God gave him wisdom. But <laughs> you need wisdom to handle 700 wives and 300 concubines. Also, you need the understanding heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. At, at the start, God was his ally. God helped him so very much to achieve so many things. You see, when God is your ally, you will achieve a lot. When God is your helper, you, God helped him so much. I don't understand why he just allowed the wives and the concubines to just make him turn his heart against the one who is his ally, the one who helped him achieve a lot. But he turned his heart against the God who helped him so marvelously. And then he went to other gods. He summed up he summed up all life had he summed up all life had taught him in the last chapter of Ecclesiastes. He says, Look at all the things he has gone all through and all those things that you know he started well and then he didn't end very well. He says, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. God was helping him and giving him counsels, what to do, what not to do. But his heart was turned against God, and he went to other gods. And then in the last, his last days, he started telling, please, I have made this mistake. Don't make this mistake. I've made, yes, I started well, and I did not end so well. At the end of my days, let me write this so that people can read and know that when, if God be for you, nothing can be against you. If God is your ally and helping you, don't leave your ally and your helper and follow other things. Hallelujah. So let's look at lessons from his life. The wisest and the richest man that ever lived was Solomon. Hmm. God revealed himself to him physically and talked with him twice. Solomon took many foreign wives for himself, which God has forbidden him to. You know, that was God asked him not to do that. But he said, nah, nah. <laughs> he said, nah. <laughs> so God forbid him to do. And then turned his heart to other God as God had warned him. So God tore the kingdom out of the hand of his son. You see what he did to the next generation? His legacy that continued with that kind of wisdom, with that kind of um, heart of understanding, with that kind of riches. But still, God still had mercy. Let me just give the son, just cry. I won't take everything away from your lineage. Let me just give you one so that you can be remembered. Why? You not know, because of Solomon, but because of his father, David, King David. If there was no King David, the son of Solomon would not have anything. But God remembered the covenant he had with King David. Because David was faithful. He followed the, the counsel of God, the status of God. That's why God remembered. Oh, yes, you missed it. But let me remember your father and then help your son. Hallelujah. So the question this morning is, what legacy are we living here on earth that people will remember us for? What legacy are we living here on earth that people will remember us for? What mark are we leaving here? What impact are we making? How will people describe us when we leave this earth to be with God? That's a question we should answer by ourselves. Yeah. 
There may be sins God is warning you against, just like God warned Solomon. There may be things God is warning you against. It's better for you to not do what the Lord is asking you not to do because there's repercussion. There was repercussion for King Solomon. Hallelujah. There is repercussion for disobedience. A legacy that was supposed to continue was removed out of the hand of Solomon's son. But because of David, not Solomon, God gave just one tribe to Solomon's son. In other words, Solomon stepped out of God's plan and purpose for his life. And this affected his next generation. So now let's look at lessons we can learn from his life. Lessons we can learn from his life. The first one he says, if you need wisdom, ask God for it and he will give it to you. If you believe and do not waver in faith. If you lack wisdom, ask. That's what James 1, 5 to 8 says. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask. Ask God who gives generously to all without finding forth and it will be given to you. In other words, when you ask, just believe that it will be given. Not you ask and you're thinking, oh, will I receive it? No. The Bible is saying when you ask for it, it will be given to you. Hallelujah. So the next one, it says, do not prioritize the things of the world or they may become a snare to you. Keep yourself separate from them. Hallelujah. In 1 John 2, 15 to 17, it says, do not love the world or anything in the world. What is the world? It's a question. What is the world? No answer? Come on, guys. What is the world? Yes. Lost of this world. Lost of the eyes. Lost of the flesh. The pride of life. Love for money. Bible says you can love God and love mammon. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. Money is good. Don't get me wrong. But the Bible is against you loving it. And then putting it in where God is supposed to be in front. Money is in front. And then God is just around the corner. You have to set power. It is right. Hallelujah. The third one, it says, Riches and wisdom will not keep your spiritual... Sorry. Riches and wisdom will not keep you spiritually safe if you insist on disobeying God's law. Riches and wisdom will not keep you spiritually safe if you insist on disobeying God's law. In Colossians 3, 5 to 6, Colossians 3, 5 to 6, it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, we've mentioned all this before, evil desires, and greed which is idolatry, because of this, the wrath of God is coming. Number four, he says, we should not just know what is right, but do what is right. Yeah, you can know what is right, but sometimes doing it, you're not doing it. I know it in my head, head knowledge. I know it in my heart, heart knowledge, but doing it physically, we are not. That's what he's trying to tell us. We should not just know what is right, but do what is right. In James 4.17, James 4.17, it says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. If you know what is good and you're not doing it, it is a sin to them. Because of our time, let's just run off. In conclusion, Solomon was human just like all of us. And everyone makes mistakes. Thankfully, 
if we genuinely repent, we serve a redeeming God whose grace and love are unmatched. Hallelujah. If you've missed it, it's not the end. You can always come back. We have a father. We have a father who can always help us when we come back, when we repent. Or if you say, no, I'm not going to repent. I just want to go my own way. Then you keep going your own way. God will just be there and watching you. And your own way is going to lead to destruction. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, our God, Father, in any way we've missed it, Lord, we ask that you have mercy upon us this morning. Father, please redirect our steps. Bring us back, oh God. Bring us back to the path that you want us to go, the path that we should follow, oh God. Help us, oh God, in this journey of life. Help us not to miss it, Lord. Help us through the Holy Spirit to keep directing and navigating us through our time here on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be God now and forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. The children, if you can go to your... Um, so 0 to 12, there's a room where you, you're going to do your worship there. And you're going to do, learn from the teacher as well. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Anyone excited to be in the presence of God this morning? Let's stand on our feet. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to read a scripture for us this morning. And it's Romans 12, 1. It says, Christian friends, God has been very kind to us. Because of that, I really want to serve God with the whole of my life. Offer your bodies to him like a sacrifice that continues to live. Serve him with everything that you have. And that will please him. That is the true way to worship God. Amen. It's not in the songs, not in the lyrics. But God is asking us to open up ourselves, open up our hearts to him. That is the true way to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song today. I've brought myself. I am your worship. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your sacrifice. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your worship. Receive this living sacrifice. I am your worship. ourselves this morning. We come to you, Lord, as a sweet man in heaven. A building, Lord, this morning. True worship. Amen. We have more than a song. Lord, yeah. I brought myself. We brought ourselves. I am the sacrifice. We have. I have more than a song. Lord, today. Oh, I am your worship. We have. I am what 
than a song. Today, I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song.
blessed to be stressed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Very blessed. Very blessed. I'm blessed to be stressed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Very blessed. Very blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Very blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Lifting up when men, when men are cast down, are cast down. I say, I say, there is lifting up when men, when, when men are cast down. I say, I say, there is lifting up. I am blessed, I'm blessed, so blessed, so blessed, very blessed, very blessed. I'm too blessed to stress. I am blessed, I'm blessed, so blessed, so blessed, very blessed, very blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God.
darkest night. You are close like no other. You are just too close like no other. I know you as a father. And even the very best friend, you are the best friend. I oh, I am living in the goodness of God. Because why? Oh, my God, you have been faithful. Hey, Daddy, I have sight and sight and sex. Oh, my God, you have been, been so, so good. With every breath, I am able to breathe. I will sing of the good. Me, Daddy. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. When I look back, what did I see? Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your good love. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Else. I see your goodness. I see your mercy. I see your favor. Your mercy is running after. It's running after me. Your mercy, Lord. Your mercy is running after. It's running after me. Your favor, Lord. Your favor is running after. It's running after me. Of who you are. 
Thank you, Lord, for our very own salvation that we have received of you. Thank you for translating us from the powers of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness, to the kingdom of your dear son, the kingdom of light. Thank you, Lord, for your favor, for your mercy, for your goodness that keep running after us. Thank you, your many blessings, too numerous to, to count, oh Lord, that we know are running after us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We just want to say we bless you. We want to say we bless you. We want to say we bless you. You know, it is very scriptural. The Bible says in um, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. They shall be running after. They shall be coming after. They shall be coming over. They shall just overtake. That is the word of the Lord. And as you gather yourself, you know you could be out there, you could be in whatever, you could be a beach. You could be walking your dog. You could be strolling and, you know, but you chose to be in here. You chose to be in here. No wonder you can both say your goodness is running after me. Can you just lift up your right hand to the Lord and say, Father, I appreciate it. Thank you for giving me understanding. You know, yesterday we went for evangelism. One woman was telling me, I don't need God. I don't need God. I know morals. I have good understanding. That's okay. That's enough. But here you are because God opened your minds. That's an opening of your mind to make you understand what it means to have a relationship. And you didn't buy that. You didn't pay for it. But as you made that choice, what else do you think God is going to do? He makes all those things that they run after to come and flow onto you, upon you. So for that we say, Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we appreciate you. It's not according to money. It's not according to wealth. It's not even to whatever it is out there. It is an understanding. It is a grace. It's a privilege. And we say, Lord, we are thankful. Lord, we appreciate you. Because we know, Lord, we are not serving you in vain. Your goodness, your favor, your mercies, your blessings run after us. And we just say we appreciate you. You know, Sunday we were learning about Solomon. You see, just because he gave attention to God, you see the blessing that was following this man. He was so much wealthier than the rest of the whole world. He had all wisdom beyond everybody in the whole world. Simply because he gave his attention and his all to God. I want to say it's a privilege. Father, we say we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Lord, we just appreciate you. We worship you from the depth of our hearts, Lord. You know, for all the songs, that we are the worship. We are your worship. We are your worship. We offer ourselves unto you. We say, Lord, we are all that I am. Everything that makes me up, Lord. We just say, we lay them to your feet this morning. Lord, accept. Accept our sacrifice. Accept us. Accept us whole of all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Can I say it's a perfect time? It's a perfect place to bring your offering unto the Lord at this time. It's a perfect place. It's a perfect time to give your offering unto the Lord. Do you know what? I'm going to ask you to actually give it on your knees if you are able to bend. If you are able to bow. If you are able to kneel. I tell you, I walk at yesterday on evangelism. A woman tells me. I do not need God. Do you know what? Look, your understanding of God, I tell you, is because he gave you and he shed his light upon you. That light had to come to your heart for you to understand. If you're able to bend, if you wish to, can I ask you to bring your offering unto the Lord? And say, say, Father, I humble myself, all of myself. I am the sacrifice. I am. It's not the money. What is the money? Do you think God is hungry? No, it's not. It is so that he can have another reason, more blessings, more reasons to bless you. So, Lord, we hope ourselves this morning. We humble ourselves this morning as we bring our offering unto you. The account number is on the screen. If you don't have it, it is time to say, Lord, we just say we appreciate you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your blessedness. That which we enjoy. Thank you for your understanding. What a privilege to be so named unto you. What a privilege to be called by you. Let's say we bless your name. Father God, we say we worship you. Thank you, most holy Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Does anybody need an envelope? Please, your hand if you need an envelope. Otherwise, the account is on the screen. That is for you to do. But please, you are giving your offering right now. All of you, all of you. The token you are giving is just an exception. So we are just saying, Lord, here we are, all of us. In our humble state, we bring our offering to you, Lord. you have come to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you,
yes, Lord. The ones you held has come to worship you. The ones you held has come to worship you. The ones you held has come to worship you. I want to ask him, accept a living sacrifice. Accept the living sacrifice. I am. Manifested in giving us Son Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Th thank you for giving us the understanding to receive that blessed gift we could never have paid for. Lord, we bring our offering to you this morning, not because we could pay by any chance, but Lord, we give our offerings as a token as our appreciation just to show that we love you just to show that we appreciate what you have done in opening our understanding Jesus died for the billions and billions in this world yet how many have saved him but as many as received him he gave them the power to be called his sons God and that's who we are so father we are not taking this for granted we say Lord we appreciate you and that's why we are asking, Lord, that you will accept us, accept all that we have, accept all that we are. And we say, by no means could we ever have given enough. Well, because we know that out of the abundance that you have given us, we can bring a token and it will be acceptable unto you. Father, please accept us. Please accept our offering. Accept all that we bring to you at this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, I want to say you're very welcome to church. You can, you, just, just for, for, for some minutes. I just want to thank God for this house. I'm always very honored to be in this house, in this congregation. I just thank God for your hearts. I just thank God for your lives. I just thank God for your standing. I just thank God, you know, for the humility. And uh, I mean, look, really, apart from us, there's nothing to us, so human beings. When you walk in the hospital, you know there's nothing to us. One day and the next day gone, you know. So humility makes us understand the futility, isn't it, of all of this. And that makes us understand and appreciate the deposit of God in our lives. I want to say I'm always privileged to be in your midst. And I want to thank God for the humility in, in your sacrifice of not just money or yourselves. In humility of, you didn't need to kneel down, but you did. So I want to thank God for honoring just that word. I, I didn't plan that. And I want you to believe and trust God. That God is faithful because he sees. You know, the reason we talked about Solomon this morning, isn't it? The reason Solomon was blessed. Nobody told him to give all the sacrifices he did. But it just came upon him and he did. And he did. And as he did it, he never regretted it. So I want to believe that when words come and we just simply follow and we just know, 
you can be sure God notice. God takes notice. God takes record. You know, God always God keeps record. You know, there's a record, there's a book of remembrance. I want to thank God that a book of remembrance is written as by your kneeling, as by your sacrifice, as obedience, as your humility of this day in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray that heaven records it. I want to pray that heaven remembers it. I want to pray that heaven honors it. You have honored the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Isi. Hallelujah. It's time for Yes. <laughs> Good morning, church. But for your grace, I will not be saved. But for your grace, I will go my way. I'm forever that you have been faithful to us lord but for your amazing grace amen hallelujah thank you for the word of god that is one he just um my legs took off the words from my mouth it's good to be saved we are happy that we are saved we're happy that god has but us, he has opened our eyes to see his marvelous light. But there are a lot of people out there who haven't seen this light. And that's the focus of our prayers this morning. I was in a bus some time ago, and I heard a, a man, he's Hindu, stylishly preaching the gospel of his religion. And I was broken in my mind, like, okay, we are Christians, but we are afraid. We are afraid to tell people what we believe in, the God we believe in. And I was touched. So this morning, let's please rise up and let's thank for the salvation of our souls. Let's bless God for saving us even when we are ready, even when we, we didn't know where to go. The grace of God brought us this far. Father Lord, we are grateful. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for opening our eyes, for removing the veil, for, for bringing us out of darkness from the full we're in, Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us forth. We bless your name, O God. We give thanks, Father. Hallowed be your name, Lord Jesus. We magnify you this morning for going to that cross and dying for us, for redeeming our future. Lord, we say thank you. We bless your name, O God. We give you thanks, Father. Let's open our mouths and pray for as many, as many who have not seen this light. They are in our family, in our family, in our, in our group of friends, in our office, in the places we walk, in the places we have businesses to do. Let's leave, if you remember their names, let's open our mouths and begin to pray on their behalf. That the Lord will have mercy. That the Lord God will open their eyes. Let them see what you are seeing. You could be anywhere else. You could be lying on the beach. You could be shopping this time of the day. Oh, here you are. Lord Jesus, we do not take this grace for granted. We do not take this privilege for granted. Oh Lord, open the eyes of our brothers. Open the eyes of our sisters. Let them see your marvelous light. Let them see your power. Let them see your goodness. How can a man say, I don't need God? How can he say you don't need God when you see the things that he do every day? Open your heart and say, Lord Jesus, help my brother. Help my sister in the mighty name of Jesus. Help my father. Help my mother. Help my husband. Help my wife. Help my children. Lord Jesus, crying on behalf of our friends, of our, of our brothers and sisters, our neighbors this morning. Lord God, open their eyes. Let them receive the marvelous light. Let them receive the gift that you have given to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's also use this opportunity to pray. Every demon, every spirit behind locking people down, closing their minds to the word of God, that the Lord God will take it out, who put them under captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. We release every member of our 
household from that captivity, from that bondage, from the blindness. Lord Jesus, open their eyes to see your goodness. Open your open their eyes to see your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, we cry on you today, Lord, that our brothers and our sisters, as they hear the word, as they hear, as they hear the word that comes from the people, from your children, Lord Jesus, they will be saved. They will be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. You will reach out to them, Lord. They will not, their hearts will not be hardened. Their hearts will not be hardened. The Bible says that people, their hearts are smelled with hot iron. Every heart has been smelled with iron. Lord Jesus, you will soften them up in the mighty name of Jesus. You will soften them up in the mighty name of Jesus. We also want to use this opportunity to bless God and to say, ask God to help. That for as many who do not, who have received, but yet they are struggling, but yet they don't know which way to go, that the Lord God will send his help. He will send Send forth his help. His word will reach out to those to comfort, to set them on the right path, to put them in the right direction. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for power. We thank you for your power. We thank you because you are able to give us direction. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that breaths. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that quickens the hearts of man. Lord Jesus, quicken the hearts of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl who has said, I want to follow Jesus. That they receive receive the power to follow they receive the power to follow that they will not just put hands on the plow and look back that the Lord God will send forth his help he will send forth his power he will send forth his help in the mighty name of Jesus father we bless you we give you thanks Lord Jesus we magnify you we acknowledge that all we are and all we have is you you are the reason why we are standing you are the reason why we can say we can lift up our hands to praise Lord Jesus, accept our worship this morning. Accept thanksgiving this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because you know we know you said our prayers. We thank you, Lord, because every prayer we've said, we've interceded for our brothers and our sisters, we know you've heard. To you be our honor, glory, and adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for clapping. Yes, we recognize what God is doing in our lives, what God is doing. Hallelujah. You can have your seats for briefly. I want to say good morning, church. Good morning to all the beautiful people in the house. Thank God for uh, his goodness to us. When I look, the sun is shining. It's almost too hot, isn't it? Is that not very strange? Another season now. You need layers and layers of coats, isn't it? That is God for you. God changes times and season. Hallelujah. I want you to help me do something. I want to help you to welcome people sitting next to you. Apart from that, I'm sure if you look to this side of the house, you probably notice what I'm noticing. You're noticing grandma in this side of the hall at this minute. We have grandma in the house for the first time. And, uh, you know, grandma, grandpa, do you mind to stand, ma, and sir, respectfully? We want to say welcome you. That's a good reason for you to be in town. You'll have a grand baby daughter there and we say we we welcome you man we welcome you sir now i have you know how to whom honor honor is due isn't it now anybody else who is watching with us for the first time <laughs> is anybody else watching with us for the first time apart from grandma and grandpa okay oh yeah that's to fisaya's friend her name also is fisaya <laughs> i'm very nosy so i know <laughs> Her name is also Fisa. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Can I ask us to actually, do you, if you don't mind, can I pray? Mommy, we're going to pray for you now. Daddy, we're going to pray for you. Can you just please stretch your hands to our wonderful guests who have joined us for the first time? I want to just lift them up before the throne of grace. We say, Father, please perfect that which concerns them. Father, please let, let the grace upon this house be released upon them. Let the blessings in this household, Father God, be multiplied upon them. Father God, in this time that they have entered this house, Lord, we want to pray that they will experience your goodness in a special dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we commend them unto you. Please do that only. You can give them a special gift to commemorate their worship with us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless and we glorify you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Today is a special day. You know why? We have two babies that are going to be dedicated in the house today. Is that not awesome? Thank you for clapping. Our God is good. 
Our God is great. God is doing awesome things in this house. Two babies are to be dedicated. That is just so brilliant. So I want to say we appreciate God. So that's what we're going to be doing later in the service. But this time I'm going to ask pastor to come and bless us with the word. This is the time you have been waiting for. The time for the word. I want to believe that, um, you know, we are all here to pay attention and to hear the word. I'm sure you have noticed that the children are not here this morning. This is the first time. They already started their own service. And I believe that uh, they're having an awesome time. They can apparently hear us, yeah, isn't it, for the worship and things. And uh, so that is a new system, and God is moving forward. So um, there will be less of the distraction. They can have their own fun where they do their own thing. So the Lord bless you. Thank you. That's why you, if, you, if you are wondering, where are all the children? Because they are doing their own thing on the other side. The Lord bless you. Pastor, sir, can we just lift up before the throne? I will just ask that the Lord multiply his grace upon him. We pray for the anointing and the blessing that the Lord grants you to open your mouth like the pen of a ready writer. That as you speak for the word, you will speak for according as heaven releases upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just commend your son unto you. We ask that you use him for your glory in Jesus' name. And you might be like a pipe that just drowns the, the water and you have no drink of it. So the Lord himself will grant you that dimension of grace that makes you, as you release it, you also imbibe of it. You also drink of it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Thank you, the good I am that I am. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Thank you, Lord. These are your people that are called by your name. They have come into your presence, Lord. There are thousands of places that they could have been at this time. But they have chosen to be in your presence. They have chosen to come to you, Lord. And you have said that they that come unto you you will in no wise count. They have come to you. And there are expectations in their heart. Father, I pray that your children will not be cast out from your presence. And I pray, Lord, that you grant the desires of their hearts. Fulfill the cry of the hearts of your people. Meet your people at their points of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Look upon each one and answer each one according to the need of each one in the mighty name of Jesus. People talk about holistic plans or holistic uh, you know, thing that is focused on individual. So we say, Lord, let your blessing be upon every individual that is here to this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And I surrender myself to you, Lord, as a vessel. So, Lord, use me. Use me, Lord. Use my lips. Use my voice, use everything. I lay down myself to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to clap our hands this morning. Thanks be to God. And we're going to give thanks to the Lord. Why? Oh, yeah. Put your hands so together. So put, it, put your hands together. Like this. Let's sing it together. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who leads us in his triumph. Thanks be to God. Who scored the victory. Thanks be to God. Who leads us in his triumph. Thanks be to God. Who scored the victory? Thanks be to God. Who leads us in this triumph? It's a month that we need to give thanks to the Lord because He's leading us in triumph. Thanks be to God. Who leads 
a sin is triumph. Thanks be to God, who saw the victory. We have overcome the world by the blood of the Lamb. By loving all our lives, even to death. The word of our testimony. Tell the world about his love. As we shout unto the nations. He's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. Shout it out. You are going to be led in triumph. Are you going to be done and be, and be in triumph? Rise up on your feet because God is leading you in triumph. God is leading you in victory. When you are being led, you have to march like a soldier because you are taking territory, you are taking regions, you are possessing your possessions. Jesus is the one and only lasting sacrifice. Lasting sacrifice. He has conquered Satan's power. No more shall we be ashamed. Just that he defeated death. He's, He's gonna die. die. No, we shall never die. Oh, thanks be to God. Who leads the seed is triumph. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. He's got the victory. Who leads the scene is triumph. Thanks be to God. Who scored the victory? Who leads the scene is triumph. Thanks be to God. Who scored the victory? Who leads the scene is triumph. Thanks be to God. Who leads the I believe it. He's got the victory. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord. Shout hallelujah to the Lord. Shout victory to the Lord. Shout victory. Shout, shout, shout to the Lord. And clap your hands, all ye poor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got a victory. We got the victory in the mind of Jesus. We overcome the world. We overcome devil. We overcome the evil. We overcome the, the enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's won the victory for us. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats. You see, my brethren, this month, the Lord is speaking to us that we have, we triumph. We triumph. If there is any area of your life you have been defeated before, you are rising up in victory. Say, victory is mine. Victory is mine. In Christ Jesus, I have victory. Psalm 47 verse 1 says, Clap your hands, O ye people. So, what do you do? Your hands, so oh, ye people, shout the Lord with the rose of prayer. Your charge of hands, so oh, ye people, shout to the Lord with words of praise. Praise Him, praise Him, shout to the Lord with the rose of praise. Shout to me. That's what God wants us to do this month. Shout, clap your hands. Don't look at the situations around you. Clap your hands. Because where your victory is, shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Voice of praise, voice of triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. We triumph. That's our portion. Let have the slide, please. Clap your hands. Shout to the Lord. It's full of actions. God doesn't want you to just 
put action to the word of God. Then you see it manifesting in your lives. It is when you put action. Even when you read the scripture, put action to read. Because what? We are doers of the word. We are not just hearers of the word. If you are just hearers of the word, then you, which means you just sit down and you, you just do hear like this. So, but if you are hearer and doer, then you have to rise up and do what the word is asking you to do. So if he says, clap your hands, O ye people, then you clap your hands. And he says, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. They shout. Because what? You triumph. So if God is asking you to do this, it means there is victory for you already. He's fought the battle for you. And he's won the victory for you. So you enjoy that goodness of the Lord because of the battle he has fought you. So you don't have to fight this. You can't even fight the battle yourselves. But God will fight it for you. That's what God is expecting you to do. You know, you know the funny thing is that in the word of God, in Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God. And put on this, put on that. And when you read that, it's as if, okay, we are going for a battle. He said, pray. With all manner of prayers. Uh -uh. So, so all, the, all the weapons I mean, that I have carried, all the shield, everything that I carry. So what am I using it to do? I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want you to dress up and pray. Then you see me manifesting in your life. Because the battle is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. And it's a spiritual weapons of the Lord that you use to win the battle. And the spiritual weapon that God is asking you to use is clap your hands, shout. Clap your hands, shout. If you are saying I'm still psychedelic, why should I be making that noise? Uh, we are in the presence of the Lord. We should be quiet and do things quietly. Sorry. Then that scripture is wrong then. So the man is, that said clap your hand and shout. Is he wrong then? Is God is the one that, that is asking you to do it. So God is not, is not it's not just when you are quiet and you're just saying everything. Sometimes he will ask you to shout. You have to shout. Sometimes he asks you to clap. Then you have to clap. Sometimes he asks you to jump. And you have to jump. But if you say you can't do it, then the miracle can't come then. Now, clap your hands. All you peoples, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph and sing of joy, songs of joy. So, my brethren, look for songs of joy and be singing. Look for songs of joy and sing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sister Amy, the Lord asked me to tell you that you have found favor in sight and you are highly favored above all women in the mighty name of Jesus you are highly favored you are highly favored you are highly favored sister Amy you have the favor of the Lord you have the favor of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus and when that word came that word came to Mary. And why was she highly favored? Because God has something great for her. So you are highly favored, my sister. The Lord is looking on you with his favor. And therefore, 
weep no more. You have the favor of the Lord. And to everyone Hosea chapter 2 verse 1 if you just splash it on the, on the board he said say unto your brother you are my king's man you are my man you are my people and say to your sister you are highly favored okay so he say unto your brother Ami that Ami means you are my people you are my brethren you are the people of God and to you women you are special the Bible says you are Ruama, Ruha. That means you are favored. You are favored. You are favored. So you receive the favor of the Lord this month in the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God is upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Highly favored the Lord. Now, when our, I mean, how do you shout? I mean, when do you shout for triumph? When? You see, when there are stations where you find yourself shouting and clapping and rejoicing. Why? Go to the next slide, please. When you have a success, good success, when you have success, you shout for joy. You shout in triumph. You clap your hands. You give glory to God. So, starting from the middle, he said, when do you shout with the voice of triumph? When you have great victory. How many of you are looking forward to great victory this month? And for the rest of your life, you are having victory. Then he says, shout! So the key to your victory is shout. Hey! Hallelujah! Then, when you achieved great things, great achievement, after great achievement, how many of you are looking forward to achieving great achievements this, this month and for the rest of the month, I mean the year and and the rest of your life. Achievement that will stand forever. Shout for joy. Great success. When you have good success. You shout. Hallelujah. You are going to be success my brethren. Success is yours. Say success is mine. Success is mine. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you have breakthrough, you shout for joy. Breakthroughs are yours. You will have breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the package that God has for you is great. You will not miss any one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. You've been, you have been thoroughly packaged to rejoice. What will make you rejoice? What will bring gladness to your heart? The Lord will do them in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Divine visitation. Visitation that will transform you. Visitation that will change your life forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. So what we are learning now is that with every victory that is shout. When you suddenly have victory, you shout. When you have success, you shout. When you have, when you make progress, you shout for joy. When you have breakthroughs, you shout for joy. And these are the things that are coming your way. The power that is in the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord gives you victory. The Lord grants you big breakthroughs, success in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to the next slide, please. Exodus, 
You see, when 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 there is shouting, they you know they denote some things. When when you just hear something, when you have a shout, you don't just come. They have meanings. Every shout has a meaning. Okay, with each victory, there is a noise, a sound, a cry, a loud exhale, ex exhale, or a lifting up of your voice, or even lifting up of your hands to praise over the triumph, tri triumphant moment. When there is a triumphant moment, you shout for joy. Just like when all this, my brethren, this my sister and my brother, and this my sister and my brother there, when they have this, their beautiful babies, there was a shout of joy. And grandpa, you got Sorry, I was blowing tongues. I hope you. <laughs> you know, as grandpa, when they bring a good news to you, you shout for joy. You rejoice because God has done great things for you. So, these are the kind of joy that God brings your life. Something that will stir joy in your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. So there's going to be a stirring up. Because God is doing great things in your life. All your expectations will come to fulfillment. Now, in that book of Exodus. Like I said, every shouting, they have meanings. Now, that was a kind of... So, yeah. so don't get confused at all. Like... Like what happened here? Exodus 30 from verse 17 to 18. It says, And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war. So sometimes there could be a noise of war. That's not your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to find out the way the Ukrainians are feeling now. Because there is voice of war. There. The blasting of guns and the blasting of, you know, what? Oh, my God, God. The Lord will cause war to cease over that nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak peace to the land, land of Ukraine in the mighty name of Jesus. All the drums of war will tear them completely. All the weapons of warfare, they are broken into pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, he said that, that, that means there is war. You know, they were, they were in the presence of the Lord. Collecting the commandment. When they heard the voice. Why? Because uh, Aaron they, he was persuaded to, to make graven image. For these strength. And they were bowing down. And they were shouting. So they heard there. So there is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, it is not the noise of the shout of men. It is not the noise of the shout of victory. Nor the noise of the cry of defeat. So when there is a shout of victory, or let me say, there is a shout of victory. So when somebody is victorious, the kind of shouting that will come is different from the kind of shouting that people who are at war will be shouting. Or defeated people. Then again, it says, no, the noise of the cry of defeat. So when one is defeat, it's so it's different. Then, he now said, the sound of singing I hear. The sound of singing I hear. Even though they were doing bad things. They were worshiping idols. They were doing something contrary to God. But they were rejoicing. They were dancing. 
But you, you are children of God. You will sing joy. You will sing to the Lord. We sang this morning and we were dancing, we were doing everything. I beg you, when you come into the presence of the Lord, dance. My young people, dance. Don't. Those of us who have been, been in the outside of the world before, we know. We used to break dance. We used to do everything. Tell me any kind of dance. We've done it before. But now, I do them no more. I do them no more. In fact, I've... But when I come to the house of the Lord, I dance for the Lord. I clap for the Lord. I break down for the Lord. That's it. Please, dance for the Lord. That's where your victory is. It's part of your weapons of warfare. So if you, don't, if you come to church and they are singing, you are not dancing. Sorry. You are... Sh short, short, chain, extra. Okay. You know the English. <laughs> I know the English. You... <clears throat> so I pray for you, my brethren. We shall hear and we shall shout. We shall make a triumphant shout this month and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 89, verse 15 to 18. He said, Oh Lord, how blessed. In fact, I want you to just read that scripture. I want us to read it together. If you can see it, see it from where you are seated. I want you to read it. He said, Oh, oh Lord, how blessed are the people who know the tri triumphant shout, for they shall walk. I want you to say, I will walk. Mm, let, let's take it again. Oh Lord, I am blessed because I know triumphant shout, for I shall walk in the radiance of your presence. I shall do nothing but clap for joy. Are you clapping for joy? I shall do nothing but clap for joy all day long. For we have known, I have known who you are. I know who you are. I know you are almighty God. You are, I know you are all sufficient God. I know who you are and what you do. You are exalted. You have exalted us. The Lord will exalt you. I mean, you are exalted on I. The Lord is exalted on I. The glory of your splendor is our strength. The glory of the splendor of the Lord is our strength. That's where our strength lies in. And your marvelous favor makes us even stronger. Lifting us even higher. You are our king. The holiest one of all. Your, 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 your wraparound presence is our protection. Hallelujah. The wraparound presence of the Lord is your protection. In the mighty name of Jesus. That, that's TPT. The Passion Translation Bible. So God wants to shout for joy. He wants you to rejoice. Then Psalm 18, I think it's verse 17. It says, shout of joy and victory. I in the tent of the righteous. How many of you are righteous in this place? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And therefore, shout of joy shall be in my house. Shout of joy shall be in my tabernacle. I will shout for joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Next slide. Hallelujah. Now, we know that this month, God is told, tell us that we triumph and we possess. And I want you to make pronouncement. I triumph and I possess my possessions. In the mighty name of Jesus, I triumph and I possess all my possessions. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 17. That's where that scripture comes from. It says, but on Mount Zion, on Mount Zion, there shall be a deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of New City of Redemption Parish shall possess their possessions in the name of Jesus. And I want you to personalize it. 
I want you to say, in my house, in my home, there shall be deliverance. There shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And my house, I said, the house of Ayodeba Miolorotoba shall possess his possessions. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will possess your possessions. Oh, hallelujah. If you come from Ibadan, you say, church by possession. I tried to say, I was I'm struggling to friendship between the two of them. I possess my possession. Hallelujah. Sorry, brother. <laughs> yeah, from a global show. Okay. Okay, now. Yeah. We post. Oh, I did like it. You are from. You are also from a global show. It's okay. Where are you from? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so we possess our possessions. The mighty name of Jesus. Nothing, we are not missing anything in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay? Now, looking at this scripture, I want us to you see that the, I, I like Hallelujah. Okay. Now, deliverance. I want us to operate as people who have knowledge of what the word of God says about us. If you are born again, if you are a child of God, deliverance is yours. You are delivered. Because being born again means you are delivered from the kingdom of darkness. You are no more head bound by the power of darkness. You are no more under the influence of darkness anymore. But if you are not born again yet, I want to tell you that being born again grants deliverance for you. And because, don't run away from, okay, leave it, don't worry, leave it. So now, being born again will grant you the possessions that God for you. Because being born again means you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then you are have access to the storehouse of the Lord. We are all that you need are packed. So, be born again. You give your life to Christ. Live your life in Christ. Then, your possessions will be sure in the mighty name of Jesus. So, it says, that scripture says, there is deliverance, there is holiness. Now, let's look at this scripture. Now, this scripture is from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 from at verse 70, 76 or something like that. Okay, from uh, 69. He says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. So, God has visited us and he has redeemed us. He visited us by sending Jesus Christ to us and we gave our lives to Christ. So, and we are redeemed. So I want you to have that understanding. Don't, don't allow yourself to come under the influence of people who say you are possessed or you have evil spirit or you are under cause. No, no, no. Don't, don't. If you have the understanding of the word of God and you dwell in the word of God, you are saved. You have the covering of the Lord. So he said, bless the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited. It's not, it's not saying he's going to visit. And redeemed. It didn't say he's going to redeem. He's redeemed. You are redeemed already. You are set free. But if you are not born again, be born again. So that this word can be fulfilled in your life. He says, and has raised up 
a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. The horn of salvation that is raised for us is Jesus Christ. Is the horn that he raised for us. And as he spoke by the mouth of the Holy Prophet who have been uh, who have been since the world began that I want you to note of that verse 71 he said that I want us to read it together that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us so Jesus Christ was given to you that you may be saved from your enemies so when you have Christ in your life you are saved from your enemy already so it's not you are going to be saved. Or it's not that, oh, let me pray for you so that you know. You are in Christ. You are saved. It's only when you are, in, you are not in Christ that you are in crisis. But you are not in crisis. You are in Christ. That you should be saved from your enemies. Say, I am in Christ Jesus. I am not in crisis. I am saved from all my enemies. I am saved from the hands of those who hate me. So if they hate me, that's their problem. 72 now said to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The Lord have mercy on you. The Bible says, we are vessels of mercy. Say, I am a vessel of mercy. I am not a vessel of wrath. So God, we have mercy on me. I am a vessel of mercy. 72 says, the hope which is sought to our father Abraham. And what, what is that? Grant us that we be delivered from the hand of the enemies my him without fear in holiness in righteousness before him all the days of our lives that is it so i want that to that understanding to seek in into your heart that look i am delivered so that i can serve the lord in holiness and in righteousness so when that scripture says in in on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. So that's what bring that possessions to you. That's what I assure you of possessing those things. It's only when you are not born again that you are not entitled to it. But when you are born again, you are entitled to it. So I want you to operate from that angle. Don't operate from the angle of a beggar. You are not a beggar. You are the children of the Most High God. And where the word of the King is, there is power. There is power. So the Bible says, give giving thanks. Okay, sorry. Next scriptures, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. And another assurance there is that. He said, thanks be to God. <laughs> okay, so this one, say, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified. Say, I am qualified. Not because I wrote an exam. No, say it now. Not because I wrote an exam. God wrote the exams for me. So he qualified me by himself. I mean, that's what this is. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Some of you are professionals. You, are, you know how many exams you wrote. <laughs> In fact, they give you, they gave you the, you know, the profession you are practicing now. You know how many can do you burn. You know how many, how many nights. I don't know. If people still didn't drink coffee to, 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 to read. In those days, we used to drink a la to read, you know. You just pour it on and you, you drink water and you shake body. And that's it. 
you will be for the rest of the life. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> so you know what you did to get qualified. But this one said, God qualified me. So I didn't do any exam. Jesus Christ did the exams for you, my brethren. He did the exams for you. <clears throat> okay? So we need to rush. Because I, 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 we are, I want us to reach somewhere. You know, because, you see, so please, if we overshoot time, just, just pardon me. You know, but I want us to reach somewhere. So let me quickly read. Giving thanks to the Father who had qualified us to be part, partakers. Say, I am a partaker of the inheritance of the saint in light. I am a partaker. I love your queen. That we do it, you know, we share it together. Equal, equal partners with Jesus. So Jesus is not going to take more than, I, more than me. We take equally. The same access he has, I have the same. I have the same right that he has. That's, that's, the, that's the understanding. He has delivered. Now he now says, he had delivered. Not he's going to deliver. Eh? He had delivered me. I want you to say he had delivered me. From the power of darkness. And conveyed me. Into the kingdom. Of the son of his love. So I am loved by God. Uh -uh. Hey, hallelujah. He, he, this, this are the, you know, he, in fact, I expected you to shout for joy. Hallelujah. I mean, because it's, it's something that, you know, uh, that I'm a partaker of the inheritance of the saint in light. Hallelujah. Then he says, I have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. And he had conveyed me. I didn't even go there by myself. He carried me by himself. Uh, hallelujah, my brethren. The son of his law. Slide, please. <laughs> hallelujah. Give me the next slide. Okay. Now, because we have, you know, we are farming the things that we have. In First Corinthians chapter one, I mean chapter one, verse 20, 29 says, But it is from him that we have we have your life in Christ. We have your life in Christ. Jesus, whom God had, had <clears throat> made our wisdom from God. Now, this is what guarantees you the fact that the wisdom that you have is from God. And wisdom is Christ Jesus. So Christ has become your wisdom. When you are in Christ Jesus, you have wisdom. Then it says, reveal to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden, manifesting himself as our righteousness. So Christ is manifesting himself as your righteousness that is making you of right standing. Making you all right. And putting us in right standing with God. So Christ giving you righteousness. That's what he's saying. And our redemption. Christ is your redemption. Christ, then he says, providing our ransom. From eternal penalty for sin. So, Christ is the one that paid the ransom. So, you are delivered. You are set free. All our lawyers in the house, when you go to advocate for people, what do you tell them? You tell, it's like you say, it's written. That's exactly. So, that's how you bail yourself out to in the house, in the, you know, from the hands of the devil. You tell him what the word of God says about you. And he becomes powerless. But if you don't know, then, then you are under, the, under his uh, control. But when you know, and you know that, that you know that you know, and you say what you know, then you are free. 
you say what you know and that base you out. So, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Christ has become my wisdom. Christ is my righteousness. Christ is my holiness. I'm not trying to be holy by myself. I'm just walking in the holiness of Christ. I don't have to do it by myself. But I'm just, just conformed with him. Then, I live the holy life. Next slide, please. Now, we, you know, we are talking about possessing our possessions. Now, there, this, this area that we are going to, I want us to pay attention very well. We may, we may rush it, but I want you to pay attention. In this Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says, told the children of Israel, go, take possession. So as God is telling you about possession now, take it, take it, it's yours. See, so take, go and take possession of the land your God is giving you. Take possession of the land that your God is giving you. What God is giving you, take possession of it. Good life, good success, good, good everything. Good health. Whatever you want from God, he has given you. He said, take possession of it. Whatever you want. Don't just let it run without you taking hold of it. So, to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Next slide. Next slide. And slide to the next one. So, next slide is talking about Jericho. Now, that's uh, Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1. He said, now Jericho was strictly shot, even though God has given them. But it's shot. Can you understand? So now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came, up, came, came in. And look at verse 2. He said, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given. <laughs> God left, you know, you know, the first scripture was said in, in chapter 1 is, I'm, I'm giving, giving you. Giving you. Okay? But this time around he says, I have given. So, if you say, ah, where is it? It's in your hands. So, I have given you. So, he says, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. All are given to you. Okay? But look at that. It's, that city was securely shot because God has given you all these things but the devil shot it, shot everything down because of you because of you even though God had given you but the devil shot down and said no way. Let me see how you are going to get it from my hand. What are you going to do, my brother? That thing that you want, that thing that God has, that those things that you pray for, God has given you. But there is someone sitting on it. But there is someone saying, this thing, it is secured in my hand. You cannot get it. Come and get it and let me see. That's what the devil is saying. But God says, I have given you. I have given you. Now, you know, now, now it says, secure, securely bad because of you. Those things, those blessings were bad, you know, securely bad. That's from NIV. He put barricade. Say, no, no passing. You can't go. You can't go and place your possession and put in a barricade. Now the, now the NIV says, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in, no one came in. Then, you know, another translation says, tightly shut. So I don't know what is securely barred from you. I don't know what is tightly shut away from you. I don't know what is what is 
securely shut out from your hands. I don't know what it is. But God is saying, I have given them to you. I have given them to you already. Next slide, please. You know, God will continue to say, see, I have given. So I want you to put whatever it is into, in that gap. Whatever it is that you know that you are seeking for, I want you to put it in that gap. God says, I have given it to you. Now, that scripture in Joshua chapter 1 verse 11 says, to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Now, the tense there is, it says, to, I mean, that's in present progressive tense. Which means, which means, Okay, he said, the present progressive tense is used for an ongoing action in the present. Okay? But, now move to Joshua chapter 6 verse 2. He says, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty man of valor. Now, that is present perfect tense. Mm, pres sorry. Present perfect tense. Okay. Now, and the meaning of that is that the perfect tense combine the present tense and the perfect aspect used to express an event that happened in the past that has, that has present consequences. Present consequences. Those things that you need presently presently is being given to you in the past long ago now let's quickly go so the, the, it was short but God said I've given it to you now let's go to the next slide please. quickly so that we do the dedication <laughs> now ministry of seven I want you to pay attention to it. Because the, 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 what broke down the secured seat, the, you know, those things that God had given to you and is bad somewhere. Those things God has released to you but you can't get them. The mystery of seven will break them loose in your hands. Now, and what is the mystery of seven? God said, seven priests should take seven trumpets of rams on Seven, for seven days. Mystery of seven. And the seventh month of the year, which we are now. So the mystery of seven is going to be fulfilled in your life. This month of July, in the mighty name of Jesus. Seven prophets, I mean seven, seven priests, seven trumpets, seven rams of horn. Sorry. Seven days. And on the seventh day, March round the city seven times. And the shout of the trumpet and the shout from people brought down the fence and the bad and secure city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. That is what we're going to break down. Every barrier that the enemy placed be between you and your possessions. Seven mystery, this mystery of seven. We break it down. So we have mystery of seven. We have mystery of shout. They, they, you know, when they fulfill what God asked them to, to do, the barrier broke down. The city wall fell. And the children of Israel possessed their possession. I want you to rise on your feet. You will possess your possessions in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, it's your look. I want you to come and drum. I want us to, to, to just sing a, a little bit. And what you are going to do is, what you are going to sing is, it's going to be, I, I was, you know, I will say the song in a, a bit in Yoruba, then we we'll continue in it. It says, Hallelujah, Meje Torara. Hallelujah, Meje Oma for you. Hallelujah, made you to run. Hallelujah, made you, my boy. Ready, my 
As we sing that song, I want today uh, to bring forward the babies to be dedicated. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the captain of the army and you have given the command. Seven, the mystery of seven. Break every yoke. Break every barrier. Break every secure city. All that your children, that you have provided for your children, but the enemy has bad the enemy has fenced, the, the enemy has denied them with the mystery of seven and with a shout let there be a release let there be a release so we receive, we receive we receive that with the Lord that made vision for you in the mighty name of Jesus go and rejoice in the provision of the Lord, possess your possessions in the mighty name of Jesus God has released you to enjoy the liberty of his kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mommy. Praise the Lord. Am I the only one here? Praise the Lord. Outside, we've heard that powerful message about the shout. Hallelujah. I believe we should have a better shout. Praise the Lord. I'm just so blessed because today the Lord has given us the privilege of dedicating two babies. Is God not wonderful? He's a great God. We're going to first of all have the Ayawali baby. If you like to dance, dance in with the baby, please. Hallelujah. Every just with them, my brother. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for us. Hallelujah. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous, He came to do marvelous things for us. Hey, hey. Father to you, Lord, oh. Be all the glory. To you, Lord, oh. Be all the honor. To you, Lord. Be all the glory. Father to you, Lord, oh. Be all the glory. To you, Lord, to you, Lord. To you, Lord, oh. Father to you, Lord, oh. to you, Lord, oh. to you, Lord, to you, and adoration forevermore. Come and see, oh, see. Come and see, oh. Come and see you. Come and see you. Come and see what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in a sign. Come and see what the Lord has done. It is marvelous. Come and see you. Come and see. Come and see you. Come and see. Come and see you, oh, come and see. Come and see you, oh, come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. 
It is marvelous in our sight. Come and see what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in our sight. Hallelujah. Today, the Lord has helped us as a church and as a family. And we have two families that have brought their babies into church today to present those babies before the Most High God. I was with your Wally family. And I would ask you, my dear sister and my br brother, are you born again? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you in a position to stand in the gap and declare on behalf of this child brought into the house of the Lord today? Okay, can you please read your declaration? Both of you together, please. Thank you. I we, pray, we prayed, and the and Lord has granted our, our petition, petition, which we asked of him. Therefore, Therefore, we also lent her to the Lord. Lord. As, as long as, as she lives, she is, she is lent to, to the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. All our children, spiritual and biological, shall be disciples Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare today that Ivy Jolayo Ayowali shall be a disciple of the Lord. You shall be taught of the Lord Amen. and shall be obedient to his will. Amen. Great shall be your peace Amen. and your undisturbed composure. Amen. Ivy Jolayo Ayowali, you are the sheep of the Lord. Amen. You will hear the voice of your shepherd. Amen. He will call you by your name Amen. and lead you in the path of righteousness. Amen. He would go before you Amen. and you will follow him. Amen. You will know his voice. Amen. You will not follow a stranger. Amen. But you will flee from strangers. Amen. You will not know the voice of strangers Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare today that Ivy Jolayo and your wallet you will know the voice of Jesus Christ, your shepherd. Amen. You will be known by him. Amen. You will follow him. Amen. And he will give you eternal life. Amen. You shall never perish. Amen. Neither shall anyone snatch you out of his hands. Amen. You know there's that song that we sing that says in Christ alone. I declare concerning your life, Ivy, Ivy, nothing and no one shall snatch you from the hand of God. Amen. It shall be well with you in Jesus' Amen. name. Now unto him who is able to keep you without stumbling or sleeping, or falling. I present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumph entry, in triumph joy and exaltation, with unspeakable ecstatic delight to the, only, to the one only God, our Savior Jesus Christ, our glory, our Lord and Savior. To him be majesty, might, and dominion, and power and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Unto all the ages eternal. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Father. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Can we please just give Ivy to Mom as we dedicate our second princess today. I know it's instructive that they are both princesses before the Most High God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear sister and my dear brother. Can I have the mic, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. Can I ask of you, are you born again? Yes, sir. Can you affirm that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. And are you in a position today to make a declaration concerning Mofe, Mofe Olua? Yes, sir. Can you please make your declaration as well? Thank you. We prayed. And the Lord. Mofe Olua favored We prayed. We prayed, and the Lord has granted our petition, which we asked of him. Therefore, we shall lend us. also lend her to the Lord. As, as long, long as she lives, she is lent to the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to declare this morning that all our children, spiritual and biological, shall be disciples. Amen. And today, by the grace of God and by his mercy, Mofe Olua, favor Adeyemo, shall be a disciple to, of the Lord. Mofe Olua shall be taught of, by the Lord. Amen. She shall be obedient to his will. Amen. And great shall be your peace and your undisturbed conversion. I declare unto your life, Mufe Olua, favor Adeyemo, that you are the sheep of the Lord. You will hear the voice of your shepherd. He will call you by your name and lead you in the path of righteousness. He will go before you and will follow, and you will follow him. You will know his voice. You will not follow a stranger, but you will flee from strangers. You will not know the voice of strangers in the name of Jesus. Mufe Olua, favor Adeyemo. 
I declare that you will, be, you will know the voice of Jesus Christ, your shepherd. You will be known by him. You will follow him and he will give you eternal life. You shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch you out of his hands. As you continue to grow, I speak into the life of Mofel, Lua, and Ivy that you will grow in strength. You will grow in grace. You will grow in favor. You will be blessed in your going out and your coming in. You will be blessed in the fruits of your body and in, in, in the increase of your field. Anything you do shall be blessed. You shall be, shall be said of you that you are the seed of the righteous. Everywhere you go, you shall be a testimony to the Most High God. Let's just rise up and thank the Lord for his faithfulness to you and for his love. That he will just bless you. And in the name of the Father, I'm going to present these children to our mommy here on behalf of the children's church. Hallelujah. So Lord, we just present Ivy to the children's church and welcome her. God bless you. Wow, I would love to carry them. Wow. Hallelujah. This way. This is my heart desire. Twins. Wow. This is a blessing for me. I thank the Lord for your life. In the name of Jesus, I've de- surrendered you and submitted you to the children's ministry, to this household. In the name of Jesus, your development will be according to the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, you will walk when you're supposed to walk, talk when you're supposed to talk, run around when you're supposed to run around. In the name of Jesus, you will go to primary school, secondary school, university. You will become great and mighty. The Lord God will ordain that man that will come forth with you like we are doing for you today. You do this for your children in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, because all the days of their lives, oh God, we will rejoice with these ones. They will multiply in Jesus' name, and they will be a blessing to the children's ministry. These are future praise and worship leaders. Hallelujah. That will bring glory to the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I receive you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a privilege for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> you do well, oh. you take care of us. Thank you. Amore, you. darling Jesus, you do well, oh. you do well, oh. you take care of us. Amore, a shake on you, a quit on you. Amore, come and see Dalu, Papa, me, Dalu, Dalu, oh, ye, me, me, ma, Adu, pa, see, ya, Dalu, Papa, me, Dalu, Dalu, oh, ye, me, me, ma, Adu, pa, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, we go for his goodness. Thank God that was awesome, that was beautiful. To have two babies to dedicate in one is not it's not a joke. We don't take it for granted. So we bless the Lord for that. And again, in quick succession, um, two weeks ago, as it was, I think it was, uh, we had the water baptism. And today we are going to be presenting the certificates. And that, um, for those who went for water baptism, I'm sure they know themselves already. Uh, for those of them that are here, we would like to present your certificates to you. Because... Um, Please, can we get the, those from the youth church, please? Um, so that is um, David, Ajana, Darasimi, Lani Kwekun, uh, Tiasha, Edwin, David, and uh, Daniel. And then there's peace. Please, can you all come please, so we can present your certificate to you? Sister Emo, I'm sure Sister Emo, where is Sister Emo? Okay, anyway. You want to clap for these beautiful young people? There is a mommy. There is a mommy. Where is this time? Brother Imodu, anyway. Praise the Lord. It is well. Now, I present to you. Should I just step aside so you can see a photo? Okay. I present to you the latest graduate in water baptism. Thank you for clapping. 
It's an achievement. Thank you for clapping. They actually went to the sea. You better know. They actually went and were deep in the sea. You know? So it's been very brave for them. So I want to say congratulations again to all of you. We thank God for his message and we trust that the Lord, who has begun a good work in you, yeah, will bring it to completion on the day of Christ. So do not depart. You have all already made it clear that I want to serve the Lord. So I'm going to present your certificates to you and I want to believe you, believe God with you that you are there's no looking back. You have put your hands on the plow. You shall not look back in Jesus' name. So David, Ayala, that's David. Okay, Oluwada Rasimi, that's Oluwada Rasimi. You want to face the camera? So on record that you've done this, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I have Tiasha, that's Tiasha for you. God bless you, Tiasha. Thank you very much. Uh, Edwin is not here then. Okay. David. Oh, come on, David. Oh, oh Daniel, sorry. <laughs> when there are three, this is what happens. <laughs> it's Daniel. I'm sure you are wondering. You should not give me my. Sorry, Daniel. And peace. That is peace for you. Peace, peace. You don't like the name. Peace, peace. <laughs> the Lord bless you. PP. Okay. Can we just lift up our hands and can we just pray for these ones? You know, um, it's good that you have started. We're well, praying the Lord will perfect your walk. That is a good thing to start, but that's not the end of the story. So, Lord, we commend this one to you. Father, we thank you for the beginning. We see the beginning of the journey, and we want to thank you, Father God, you will take them unto the end successfully yourself. They have put their hands on the plow. They will never look back in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we think and we glorify you because we know we can commend on them unto you. We know you are able to keep that which is committed into your hands. So, we do not have any agitation or any harassment or any doubts in our minds. We know you keep them to the end in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be God now and forevermore. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Now you want to clap for them properly because they got their certificate. They are certificated now. Hallelujah. You cannot go back to your seats. The Lord bless you. Well done. Well done. Um, I believe that yes, and I'm sorry for the children. There are some things that I need to know. We are finishing. Praise the Lord. It's all about children. Those are greater tomorrow. Those are the ones that will take care of us. Praise the Lord. Well, we did some announcements last week about our um, outing that we'll be doing on the 13th of August. And we will be saying this every week by the grace of God so that you can please start preparing, putting something aside for our children. On the 13th of August, we want to take our children from zero to teenage, our young people out, and we are going to Great Adventure. Um, oh, I thought... Adventure Island. Thank you very much, man. Um, do we have it on the screen? No, we don't have it on the screen. Anyway, we have prepared and we have designed two tickets. One is for 30, pound, for 30 pounds, and this is the amount that each child will be, yes, thank you very much, will be um, given, will contribute towards this journey. We have hired a, a, a large um, coaster, a bus, a coach that will be taking us. And this is the prize for every child um, to get on coach and for admission. So they will be getting a wristband. So everything will be taken care of with this amount. I ask that please, I know for those that have multiple children, the Lord God will bless you. This is why we have started this early. I think we have about six weeks thereabout um, to go or five weeks to um, prepare for this. So please make it an adventure that will be great by the glory of God uh, for our children. The second ticket, which will be for 20 pounds, this will be the ones that we moms, teachers will be buying. This will be um, enabled to get on the coach and also into the um, um, island itself. This does not include the rides. If you want to go on the rides as moms, dad, please, it's very advisable you get the 30 pounds ticket. With the 21, you will be able to go onto the, the coach and also you get a wristband just for admission. 
on that day, we ask that um, children, I think they, 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 they have inches that they use to measure them. And I think if they're under three, they will not be allowed to go on the um, rides. So they will need assistance. So if you have children, maybe two or three, that would need assistance in getting on this ride, we advise that you come along with us and make it a great day. And um, I think that um, uh, it will be a day that it won't rain and it will be glorious in Jesus' name. Also, we are asking the children's ministry, we are asking for the age and the date of birth of the children. Their full name, their age, their date of birth. You just put the date of the month and the month, not the year. So if you can please bring this in on um, next week, starting from next week, just give it to any one of teachers, myself, um, and you know some of the teachers that are around. Um, the lady that will be responsible for collecting the money for the ticket is Sister Bukola. Sister Bukola, can you please come to the front? Just for everybody can see Sister Bukola, because she's in pop today, tomorrow she will come in red. So, <laughs> yes. So this is our darling Sister Bukola that will be getting the uh, money for the rides. So please give her the money. Um, if you need a bank details, we'll be giving you um, bank details um, as the week goes along. So at this point in time, thank you very much for the privilege and opportunity. So the children are having some moms and dads. I hope you two are going to be having some fun too. Praise the Lord. We are finishing. Um, just a quick one more announcement and we are done. Just one more. I'm going to be getting out of here. No, ma. You did not. Praise the Lord. I just on behalf of the leadership of the church want to say thank you to everyone for helping and appreciating our pastors last week. Thank you for all your contributions and God bless you. I just want to assure you that whatever you have done is not in vain. Our God always rewards, he never forgets anyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure. Hello. Oh, praise the Lord. This is better. Now, you will see that today, the children came back after the services finished. Um, it was glory, wasn't it? From next week, please, just as they come into church, just allow them to go into their class. And that's how it's going to be. Henceforth, the Lord helping our teachers. And they've done fantastic, uh, fantastically well. The Lord will increase and multiply His grace upon them. It's not easy. It's a hard job. So please, let's support them in prayers. And let's make the job easy for them as much as possible. The Lord will bless each one of us in Jesus' name. How many of us got the bulletin? All the announcements more are on there. Bad days are on here. Please, during the week, we'll be celebrating you as you do that. If you haven't got... If you have, we don't have your dates, then we will not be able to put it in the bulletin. So please make you submit the dates for your birthdays, so that on your wedding anniversary, so they can be recognized, and we can greet you on the on the church chat as well. Pray for you. A lot of prayers go on. You know, it is your birthday and wedding anniversary. If you allow us to know, so that is what I would say to that. And please, there are many. Um, it says find your calling. There are many activities, many groups you can find yourself joining here. I tell you, what can I say? Um, the prayer champions last week we were celebrating with uh, Taiwan, Sister Hilda, all of that. Please find your calling. Make yourself useful in the house of the Lord. The Lord will bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. We have the drama team as well. We have media group. All of so many different things. And if we don't have it yet and you have a passion for it, let us, who knows, God will be setting you up and you can start your own. And God, other people will join you too. Make sure you find your calling and the Lord will bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I still rise upon your feet, please? Can I still ask to, to rise upon your feet as we are going to share the grace? But please, can I beg you, help us in packing up one even share the grace. That's also very welcome to make it quick and, and, and uh, for everybody to live on time. Shall we share the grace? Shall we speak the grace? Say the grace. I've been corrected many times. <laughs> May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Find somebody actually blessed with the surely. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall do
Sorry.